Hi there, Ian here from T Vision Technology. Um, today I've been asked to demonstrate for you some of the features of projects within Business Central. Um, those of you who are used to using NAV or an on prem version of Business Central, you might not be aware that what you know as jobs has been renamed as projects in the latest versions of Business Central because that kind of describes better what it's trying to do. So during this demo, I might refer to jobs, I might refer to projects. I'm use, going to use the two words interchangeably until I get used to calling everything projects. Um, first up, I've logged onto the system as a project manager. You can see there's a dedicated landing page, a profile for uh, project managers where you've got menu options that relate to projects. You've got your action tiles that relate to projects and you'll start seeing things like work in process, WIP, um, as well as lists of projects. And also you get your key insights. So at the moment I've got my projects that I'm keeping an eye on and I've got three charts here. And you notice it's the same projects on all of these charts. If I go and manage this list and if I remove one of these projects and then I go back to my homepage, you'll see when it refreshes that all three of these charts are in sync. All three of them are showing exactly the same information. Let me go and put that project back on just so you can see that it works the other way around too. And there we go. All three projects are displayed that I'm looking at here. So you've got a nice landing page with some useful information about the price, what you're invoicing, the cost, what you're spending, and the profitability for each of your projects. And then down at the bottom, we also have the timesheets section. And depending whether you're a person who submits timesheets or whether you're a person who approves timesheets, you'll see a slightly different uh, look down here. But this also ties in very closely with projects on the system, people booking their time. Um, let's go and have a look at a project. So I'm just going to open up the projects and you can see I've still got my projects labeled as jobs, but they are in fact projects. When you open up any project, you will get at the top, as always in Business Central, some um, header information. Who's the customer? What's a description and a number for this project? Um, where it's been delivered? and some other project related information. Who's the responsible person? Maybe the chief engineer or the computer programmer who's working on this project and who's the project manager who's taking overall responsibility for managing this project. Scroll down a little and we come to the lines and these are the tasks of the project. And you can see this is, it's kind of laid out very similar to a um, work breakdown structure that you might see in Microsoft Project or uh, any of the uh, project management tools. So this project is split up into separate phases and within each phase there are a number of tasks. So this is a very structured big kind of project. If we look at one of the other projects, I'm just going to page to the next one. This project, it's got the same header information up there, but this one's much simpler. I've only put in three lines, which, you know, an initial consultation, some prep and some deliverable. This one, I've put in more of a uh, an overview of the phases of the project with the different tasks involved. And for each of these tasks, there are planning lines in the background. So you have one project, a project can have just one or it can have many tasks. And each of those tasks can have one or it can have many planning lines in the background. The tasks, this kind of defines the structure of the project, how, how the project is laid out, as it were. The planning lines in the background, they relate to how the money is posted to the general ledger and how the customer is invoiced. So if we just look at the project planning lines for this project, we can see for each one of those task lines, there's a planning line. And a planning line can have one of three types. So these are for budget and billable, 
It could just be budget. It could be billable. So this is a kind of a, a time and materials type project. So because it's both budget and billable, I'm going to record and accumulate my costs against my budget. I've budgeted 20 hours at 50 pounds each. That's a thousand pounds. And I'm going to invoice 20 hours at a hundred pounds each at 2000 pounds. As I progress through the project, I will accumulate those costs and I will invoice the customer and accumulate that revenue. Um, so that's the kind of layout for this type of project. If we look at one of the other projects, let's look at the second project. And if I go and look at the project planning lines for this one, you will see that for line three, there's two different um, planning lines. The first line, which was just an initial consultation, maybe a sales call, it's just budget. I'm going to accumulate costs, but I'm not going to invoice the client for that initial consultation. The second line is purely billable. So I'm just going to invoice the client for what happens on this line. I'm not going to accumulate any costs. And for the third phase of this project, it's time and materials. I'm going to accumulate costs and then bill the client the costs that I accumulated. So you have many types of projects that you can record here. And if we come a little bit further down, we can see apart from the status of this project, we can see how are we calculating WIP. Are we calculating WIP on the completed contract or as a percentage of cost of sales, cost of value, a percentage of completion? This is quite a common one to use or as related to the sales value of the contract. And how are we going to post that WIP, that work in process? Uh, we can do it per project or we can do it per project ledger entry. So we have the project, we have the structure of the project, we have the planning lines in the background that determine how we're accumulating costs, how we're billing our client. And on the top project level, details about how we start posting things. We scroll down a little further, we can see, we can do fancy things with projects. Are we just billing a single customer? Are we gonna build multiple customers for this project? Maybe a head office as OS does to um, repaint 10 of their stores across the country. And we're gonna invoice each store individually, but it's one project. We can invoice multiple customers or just one customer. Uh, we can have a separate deliver to and build to customers just like we can elsewhere, payment terms, etc. Some duration for what we expect for this and foreign currencies. If we're dealing in a foreign currency, I'm doing a project for a client in Europe, perhaps in euros. Do I want to use a fixed foreign currency exchange rate for this um, project or am I going to use variable rates? And right at the bottom, some statistics about what's happened on this project. So we have this idea of a project um, and we need to post things against projects. And there are different things that can be posted against projects. And again, if we go and look at the planning lines on this project, you can post resources. That's people can be posting their time against a project. So Lena on line one, I'm expecting her to post two hours, eight hours on line two and four hours on line three. But I can also use my inventory as part of a project. So items can get posted against projects. And apart from resources and items being posted against projects, we can post GL accounts. If we um, buy in some consulting or outsource something to a third party, we would post that on a GL account. Um, um, so resources comes from timesheets, items comes from our inventory. We can post against GL accounts. We can also um, post uh, journals to bring things through into our projects. So we started talking about timesheets. We saw that on our home page. They go hand in hand with our resources. So I've got a resources menu up here. If we just look at our resources, I've got Catherine. 
Um, we look at Catherine, we can see whether Catherine needs to fill in timesheets or not. But what's really important, I get to create timesheets. Now there's a batch job that can do this. I can do this per resource within my organization. And when I create timesheets, I can create them in different ways. I can create blank timesheets so that when Catherine comes along, she has a blank screen and she will type in, this was the date, this was the project I was working on, this is the task of the project, this is how many hours I'm booking. And then she'll do that line by line by line. Or we can pre-populate that timesheet for her because we already have the projects with our budgets saying that we expect Catherine to do certain things. We can pre-populate it and say that on this date, we're expecting you to do these things. And all Catherine has to do is put in the number of hours she spends on each of those tasks. When she's finished with her timesheets, she would submit them and they would go to her manager or to the project manager who would then approve them. And approving those timesheets creates journals. Moving um, inventory from my warehouse to issue as part of the project, I create a project journal. I can do the same thing for my general ledger accounts with that third party outsourcing type of situation. I create a project journal to bring that in as one of the costs against a task of my project. And finally, if I buy something specifically for a project, I raise a purchase order on the system, I can say that this purchase order is for this task of project number 30 or project number 20. And when those goods are receipted, it posts automatically through a journal against the project. Um, we also mentioned this idea of work in process. So it may well be that um, in some projects, short term projects, for instance, you do the work, you invoice the customer before the end of the month. But sometimes you've got a big, long project that lasts six months and maybe you're not going to invoice your customer for another two months, but you've done a lot of work. We call that work in process. So there are batch jobs that you can go through, which will post all of your work in process against the project, but it doesn't post any revenue in your general ledger. It posts it as WIP. Now you can go, there's lots of setup you can do on projects to say how you want those postings to work, which GL accounts you want them to go to, etc. Um, quite apart from all of the journals that you're posting against your project at the end of the month, finance are going to get hold of this and they can go to any project and they can create invoices or there's a batch job that they can run to say, go through all of the projects, look at the percentage completion, um, and post the invoices that need to go to the client if it's a percentage of completion type. If it's a payment on completion, go and look at all the ones that have been flagged as completed and prepare an invoice for the client. And again, a lot of these things, it does not create posted documents, it creates an invoice which you can still look at before posting and you can tweak. You can maybe add a line, delete a line, change the amount if you've made some agreement with your client that you're going to change the way that you're charging this month. You've still got the freedom to do things like that. Um, another thing to look at is looking at resources again. We do get some nice tools around resources on their availability. On the planning section, we can set the capacity for each resource. We can say for Catherine, what calendar does she work to? What days is she working? We can mark days where she's going to be absent. And we can say on all of those days, how many hours does she have available to work? Which might be different to Lena, Marty or Terry's calendars. We can also check availability. So if, if Catherine's been booked against projects, she's not available to work on other projects. So let's just have a look at Catherine's availability. So I've set this up by day, 
it's for 2024. I haven't set up what her capacity is, but if I had, maybe eight hours per day available Monday to Friday, I could see how much of that is on projects already for these dates. How much time does she have left after you take away what's already booked on projects? And if I've got project quotes in my system that have Catherine's name on them, how many hours have I put there per day? How much availability if those quotes are accepted and become full-fledged projects? And quantity on assembly orders. Again, if Catherine works as a resource who's required when assembling a product, I can put how many hours is booked against Catherine already so that I can see what's her net availability. How much more workload can she take on on these dates for new projects? And while it talks about assembly orders, projects don't, uh, resources don't just have to be people. Resources can be equipment as well. Perhaps uh, my company might have one delivery truck and I've got multiple projects going. I can put my delivery truck in here as a resource. And maybe it costs me, um, I don't know, 50 pounds an hour to operate this truck. I can put in how much it costs me if I'm billing my clients for usage of the truck, delivery charges, etc., I can put in how much I'm going to charge them. And a truck can have a calendar. So I know how many hours on any given day does it have available for doing deliveries or doing pickups. We also have the idea of a project cockpit. Uh, and this idea of the project cockpit or the project whip, um, as it's called within Business Central, if we just go and search for that, it's kind of a, a worksheet where you can see for your projects how much costs have been recognized, how much has been posted into the GL for sales, etc. What's the profit in the GL? You can highlight any of them. And if something has been posted for this third project, I have posted something so I can see that I have billed my client some money for this project. So I get this kind of overview dashboard where I can start looking at my projects. And from here, I can ask it to calculate the whip. That's where you can populate those project journals to accumulate the work in progress or work in process, sorry. You can post that work in process that you've accumulated from the project into your general ledger and you can segregate those two tasks. So maybe the project management team do this part, but the finance team do this part. So you've got that availability of um, managing your projects. And quite apart from all of this, reporting on your projects. So there are some reports available within the system. Just looking at the screen, um, your landing page, looking at a project at the bottom where you can see the statistics for your projects, some fixed um, built-in reports. You can also send this to Power BI very easily. There are only about five or six tables involved that you would need to build a really nice suite of Power BI reports as to where you are with your projects. Um, I hope and this has given you a brief idea of, of what projects can do. If you've got any questions, please let us know. Thank you.